All right. Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday afternoon, early evening here in Northern California. Got uh, some earthquake activity here to talk about on this Monday, 6 p.m. California time here, June 24th, 2024. Uh, I do have uh, 2.3 coming in right now to the Earthquake 3D Globe, but along with a handful of other quakes in this area of Bakersfield, uh, the latest one does show a 3.5 earthquake following a four-pointer just about in oh, a couple hours or so ago in this area. Very shallow earthquake activity here occurring in this region. The original quake here appears to be a deeper one, about 12 kilometers or so uh, for the original earthquake 4.1, which uh, a few folks did report feeling out here across uh, even Los Angeles area. So things are... Uh they're kicking up. This is not just the only area that's seen elevated uh, earthquake activity here in the state of California. There's some of those reports being reported there, Los Angeles, and um, you know, all over the place down there. Someone, obviously, a four-pointer is going to be felt by many. Um, and let's see what we got here. This may be occurring just off of a couple unnamed faults here. Uh, it does look like back in 1952. Uh, there was an earthquake out here, earthquake fractures off of the White Wolf Fault Zone. Uh, let's put this in real quick and see what we have. Stand by for a second. Wasn't going to look up this 1952 earthquake though. Let's see where exactly that was at. Okay. So that was the Kern County earthquake here that uh, struck on the White Wolf Fault, which is, um, yeah, this one down here. It's kind of a shear type fault system here. May extend over into the Willer Ridge Fault, north of the major shear zone, which is the Garlock Fault down here across the Tehachapi Mountains. I've, I've been telling folks for a long time this area plays a lot more um potential for larger earthquake activity than people uh than geologists and whatnot put out but this area here definitely a spring so to speak when it builds up tension across the plate boundary so it is occurring very close to the 1952 uh fault system or 1952 earthquake and that was a magnitude 7.5 earthquake Let me see here. Hold on a second here. Pretty decent sized earthquake back then. Looks like uh, these guys measuring it as a 7.3. So a little bit of a uh, difference there in magnitudes. Either way, that's still a pretty strong earthquake occurred on the White Wolf Fault, and that was off of the San Andreas Fault. It was not on the San Andreas Fault, which is capable of producing, obviously, a bigger one. But it is uh, in the intersection here of, you know, the San Andreas Fault and also uh, a couple other faults that run here. Big Pine Fault to the west. Either way, these earthquakes occurring in that fracture zone here, just outside of Bakersfield, about Oh, about 10 miles or so from the downtown center area. And uh, also getting some activity away from this region as well. Overall, Southern California here has been heightened uh, in terms of earthquake movement all over the place. So it's not just one area we're focused on. It's a regional stress event out here across the entire portion of Southern California. Mainly, uh, this one's on the North American side of the plate boundary, but mainly has been here on the Pacific side, at least here in Southern California. Now we're getting a lot of that strain transferred here just off of it to the North American side. That tells me right here we have to watch the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. That's where a lot of pressure has been building here, uh, well over 300 years, and is capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake here. We have not seen it. This is the fault system here that's... Uh, or the plate boundary that's expected to produce a big one. So all these earthquakes popping up all over the place here lately um, is not a sign that, that things are um, calming down. It's a sign of uptick out here. I know some of these little quakes out here, a lot of people tend to think, well, it's relieving stress. If you look at it on a big scale, or maybe on a little, say if you look at it in a little fault system here, 
uh, Ridgecrest area, it, it can potentially be a stress reliever along a small fault system if we're only looking at earthquake activity in this specific area. But it's not just specifically Bakersfield area. It's a regional stress event out here across a major plate boundary that's been building up steam for over 300 years. So I don't see this as relieving stress. This is more time than ever to be prepared for some larger activity out here. Um, and it definitely looks like it's continuing to stir up here. 4.1, 3.5 appears to be the second largest quake here in the sequence of activity. Uh, they did not put out any type of earthquake forecast here. They, the USGS will sometimes put out an aftershock forecast following uh, an earthquake, but uh, hard to say if this is, you know, right now it's uh, one earthquake followed up by a series of smaller aftershocks, but if we start seeing earthquakes above the four range or so, uh, then we know that something bigger may be uh, brewing out here, specifically in this area, but like I said, this is a, a regional stress event that's taking place here. If we bring the 2.5 level down, uh, we can see Los Angeles had some activity earlier this morning as well across a, uh, a couple different thrust faults out here, run up uh, south of the mountain range. That 2.9 originally came in as, um, I think, a low-grade 3. They downgraded that underneath the 3 magnitude. That was felt fairly broadly out here as well this morning, waking, uh, waking a few folks up. And... Um, Further down south here, we did see a 2.6. So these are all above the 2.5 level, but if you mix in all the earthquake activity we've seen here recently in various swarm fashions, we are on the uppity uptick here in terms of potentially seeing some larger scale movement here across the southern portion of the state. It doesn't, it's not going to stay quiet forever, folks. I know we, you know, if we lived in a perfect world, earthquakes wouldn't happen, but uh, this is how plates move around when they get locked and stuck uh, say for example you know Southern California we start seeing uh, elevated activity and potentially leading to a bigger quake out here across the area most of the movement right now appears to be right around the Garlock Fault shear zone southward we did have some activity in Northern California earlier this morning um, just outside the Mount Lassen area that is a volcano there in Northern California and uh, just on the southeastern flank here of that volcano, a couple earthquakes. But uh, really no signs of it waking up in terms of elevated inflation, elevated gases, elevated earthquake swarms. Nothing showing up. Just a couple of smaller earthquakes. And these are almost literally out of the park. The peak itself is up here about five miles or so. So I'm not really concerned about that. That could be stress fault related up here. Uh, but the big deal is all this earthquake activity occurring there in Southern California right now. Uh, I do have... Uh, there's a Hot Caves Hawaii station keying up as well. That's... Uh, hold on a second here. I just want to see if anything's going on here. A lot of times with California upticks here, we'll see... Uh, some squeezing going on out here in the hot spot of the Pacific Ocean. And that earthquake coming in, just a 2.6. Nothing new to report here across this area of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, most of the activity here south into the Upper East Rift Zone as well. But really doesn't look like anything's changed here. So definitely keep an eye here on the Southern California region. Various, you know, earthquakes across should say multiple earthquakes out here across various fault systems. I don't think the uh, White Wolf Fault Zone is capable of producing another, another 7 like it did back there in 1952. But uh, let's see what the slip rate is on that. The White Wolf Fault. Uh, major ruptures, of course, the 7.5, 1952. Slip rate, uh, between 3 and 8 mm per year, possibly much less. You know, with it, with it being a fairly recent earthquake in terms of geology, you know, geology uh, that is actually a fairly recent earthquake. I don't think we have enough strain to build uh, another big earthquake out there for that magnitude, specifically on the white, uh, the white wolf fault. 
But uh, like I said, it's not just limited to this area. It's all over the place right now. These are just some of the areas that are uh, seeing the increasing pressure. 15 earthquakes here. Well, about 14 here coming up on right now. And a lot of these appear to be literally within minutes of each other. So just be on guard, folks. You know, it's we can't be living in quiet times forever. Um, a couple months back here, Dr. Lucy Jones, which is, uh, you know, she's the face of the USGS when uh, a large earthquake occurs out here or some type of earthquake swarm in Southern California or anywhere, uh, she'll jump on the media and state, you know, about what's it about, what fault system, what she believes may happen. And I followed her for quite a few years. I'm sure you guys know who I'm talking about, Dr. Lucy Jones. She mentioned here recently, I'll have to see if I can come up with that video, that uh, we've been living in, you know, fairly quiet times where earthquake activity is not all that common. Yes, California gets lots of microquakes, but far as these moderate quakes and even larger quakes, she said that we may be entering into a time where that's about ready to change. So that tells me right here that this fusion that we've been seeing here across the plate boundary is uh, probably coming to an end in terms of larger scale potential. Uh, let me bring up the catalog book here. I just want to show you guys. <clears throat> I'm going to go back here. Uh, well, technically, yeah, we'll, we'll go back uh, 2000, 2000, the year 2000. And search out here. Yeah, it's going to definitely bring up a lot of earthquakes out here. So, of course, Cascadia subduction zone up here, quite a few sixes and... I think we even had a, a, yeah, we had a seven back there in 2005. I remember that. Uh, that's always some concern as well. But across the major plate boundary here, the San Andreas Fault has not seen, you know, in over 300 years. This is just going back uh, 6.5 in the last 24 years. But this area out here is well strained. You know, you ask anybody a quick, a quick <laughs> simple search there. I was going to say quick. Uh, can't even say it now. Um, but a quick search here on any search browser will tell you that this uh, area, the southern branch, is it's there. It's about as wound tight as it can be, and then some. That's why I called it a fusion here. I think that fusion is coming undone, and uh, we'll probably start seeing some larger scale activity. There was a, remember the 7.2 uh, down south of the border, off of the Imperial Fault here, 2010, but, you know, a major plate boundary here and including some of these secondary fault systems uh, fairly lengthy ones as well that lead up to Los Angeles have not seen any activity above 6.5 so little four you know and a couple threes and some twos here recently and earthquake swarms and I say earthquake swarms because various areas down here have seen swarming north of Los Angeles south here it's uh, you know things are coming unstuck 2.3, that was uh, outside the area of interest here, outside of Bakersfield. So, Anyway, folks, be on guard. We'll jump on this a little bit later on this evening here when we do a complete update unless something major happens. As uh, far as seismograph stations go, i got a Barrett station. That's a little bit further down south in the Southern California here around San Diego. I'll look uh, on my graph here and see if I can bring up a station around that area. If it's not here on the map list, I may have to add a couple servers out here and find it. I believe it's going to be this area right about here, north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. So we'll jump on that and see if we can uh, find some uh, stations. All right. Uh, we'll be back here a little bit later on, folks. Uh, just kind of providing a little update here on all this uh, earthquake activity in, in the uh, southern portion of the state. Stay safe out there.